Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap. He's a good God. All right. Um, I want to bring to the people's attention today a few things that we need to really bring out because we're living in a very closed society. And I'm going to say closed because we've been at the mercy of people that are set up on changing the culture of America. And I think maybe if you look at it, we call it sculpturing the American culture. <clears throat> and they've worked at this very, diff very hard. And they do it in every kind of way that's even ways that you and I would never think of because this is their business and that's what they do. And what made me to bring this out was the very fact that there's people out here today. One lady told me recently, she said, uh, homosexuality isn't that bad. She said, I'm not for it, but you know, I think God is going to be tolerable to some degree to them. And, you know, I started to give her some scripture, but, you know, I cut it off real fast. I just, the Lord just, I didn't feel led to say anything. I said, I'll talk to you about it later. So I think people need to know what the mark of the beast is about. In Revelations 13, if you look around verse 15, with me just quickly, I'll give you an idea of why this is important. Worshiping the image of the beast in Revelations 13, 15 is going to be quite amazing, to say the least. And why do I say that? is because people have no idea what it means. It says in verse 16 that he causeth all both small and great, rich and poor, bond and free to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. Now I want to talk about that a little bit because many people have no idea what the mark in their forehead actually means. You can find some tattletale signs here in verse 17, it says that no man might buy or sell, save he had the mark of the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here's wisdom, but notice this is not the wisdom of the world, as Melanie said. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it's the number of man, and the number is six hundred three score and six. And he uses this word like in Colossians chapter 1, uh, chapter 2, I mean, around verse 2, where he uses the word acknowledgement, understanding the mysteries of God. And a lot of people have not this understanding, and I feel sorry for them. They've been duped, and I mean they have been brainwashed by the media, by the education system, and by people that claim that they don't have anything to do with America in a sense. But really, we give Israel all of our money every year and much more. That's how we've wound up 20, according to them, only 20-some trillion dollars in debt. And uh, I thank the Lord that we are got a building that's got some temperature in it uh, that's like down, Stacy. <laughs> we're we're leaving. You know, we got a good air conditioner system when we remember to turn it on. Nevertheless, uh, I'm supposed to do everything because I'm the handyman. You know, I'm the chef, bottle washer, cook, toilet cleaner, depending on what day it is, me or Michelle. <laughs> anyway, I don't get into that. We need to know what the mark of the beast consists, consists of and why there is they mark in the forehead. If you notice something, I'm going to bring out to you with some scriptures to show you why that homosexuality is part 
of the mark of the beast. Now, if people that are watching by television or listening by radio don't like this, take it up with God and the scriptures. I'm going to prove to you today that I am not prejudiced. I don't hate gay people or lesbians or LGBT. I do feel bad for some of the people that sit in churches and have pastors that will not even tell them about the agenda of LGBT. I talked to a lady this weekend. She said, I mean, she's blown to church for many years. She said, well, what is that? And I told her, she said, I've never heard of anything like that. Well, I think it's idiocy, and I think it's another thing to brainwash people, never bring them into the knowledge of the truth so they can at least pray about things. You know, we need to pray about things. How many of y'all still believe prayer changes things? And if you keep people blinded and they can't pray about something, you know, and it sneaks up on them, I think a lot of people are going to have the blood of these people on their hands. For he didn't know it to do good and do it to not to him is what? Sin. So I'm going to lay that charge out there. I believe some is a political hypocrite, and I believe they're a spiritual hypocrite for not telling the truth once they know about it. Anyway, if you notice the... Number in verse 18, 603 score and 6. You find this 666 is mentioned here in this book. What does it represent? It absolutely represents nothing unless you know something about our Bible. And what I mean by that is I'm going to show you quickly. I handed out the paper today, and I handed it out, and it talked about the 666 and the mystery of the 666. There is a mystery, and the reason it's a mystery is because people have not really tried too much to study on their own. They're not taught to study on their own. They listen to their pastor, and some of them sit under reprobated pastors. And I'm sorry, but that's just the truth. And I think we need to bring it out. And I think I'm going to show you today about a list of people <clears throat> that actually worship Satan. I wish I had a little more time. I'd like to have three services today. And three one-hour services, after about a week, I could convince some people of the truth of the Bible. But once they get this inside of your mind, once they get this in your character, you begin to believe a certain way. You know what? It's very difficult to change people, especially when you're a nobody like us. Now, if you were a Benny Hinn, which isn't even his real name, you know, you would believe him or John Hagee or Copeland. But Ben's were a little nobodies. Nobody wants to listen to us. But anyway, I won't go there today. I want you to look at me. I'm going to show you today about the mark in the forehead and what the three sixes mean. To understand the three sixes, you first have to understand who it's referring to. He said in verse Number 16, he says in Revelations 13, the rich, the poor, the bond, the free. And this refers to man, M-A-N. And you have to know about man to understand this. Jesus said in John's Gospel, chapter 3 to Nicodemus, you must be born again. Why would he say something like that? Why can't I just be a good person why can't I just believe in Jesus? And why can't I be a good person and just make it into heaven? Well, I'm going to show you that today and answer some of those questions and give you the, in the proper revelation of 666. And I brought it all out here. Now, for those that are watching by television, if you'd like to get a copy of this entire complete study, you'll have to come to the church or email me. Maybe I can email it back to you. But I tell the people here today, this is only part of the study. I cut out a portion of this, one page, and I handed it out to you people so you can see what this consists of. This is only a portion that I cut out of it, okay? And I cut out, first of all, I'm talking about the 666. I wasn't able to bring it all out, but I want you to look and begin this study with... Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. And I want to try to bring this out to help people today. I'm not trying to chop people up. I'm trying to help our children. 
I'm trying to help people that are sitting under uh, pastors because they don't have another church to go to. So they sit under these people that's totally ignorant and corrupted. Don't tell me that you can't learn by yourself. How many of y'all know you will learn or else you will pay the price? And if you haven't put an effort to learning, then you need to get around people that do teach about learning, people that teach about studying, people that teach to come out of the worldly minds. Because you know what? The world in Revelation 13, they all bow down to the mark of the beast. Now you can be like the world and that's easy. You go along with them, everybody will love you and you can be everybody's friends. But Jesus was not the friend of everybody, neither was the disciples. They wanted to kill Paul. And if you come out with the real truth, they're not going to like you. And if you're not willing to accept that, you need to find another religion. Maybe the religion of man. What is that? Well, you know, he kind of worships himself. Anyway, look what it says in Genesis chapter 1. This goes all the way back to the back, and this idea follows throughout our whole Bible. In Genesis chapter 1, <clears throat> verse 26, this comes from the ideal of every creature made after his own kind. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish and the sea. Now, if you notice this word image after his likeness, you can use this word image in Revelation 13 when they're talking about the image of the beast. Because it, it's the law of first mention here, and you can see how this is important once you learn how to look into this. <clears throat> but we'll go on about after this today. It says, and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowls of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creature, every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he him. Miles Monroe had an airplane crash in 2012 of where he died. He was infamous, in my opinion, and known for him preaching little God with a little G. And he preached that in TBN all the time, and he always had a crowd of his own people. He taught how man was so great, and God created you to create. You know, you're supposed to replenish the earth. You know, you get with this guy, and you listen to him, and, you know, they talked about how God had made you to create. And his stuff sounded good, but one day I got to looking at his stuff and I said, wait a minute, something wrong with this guy. I don't think God created this man. Let's study this man to see that God really created him to create anything. You find out that he's over the dominion of the fish of the sea and the fowls of the air and these things. But really, how much is that? And what does it really mean? Why does God refer in the New Testament in scriptures like Romans 8, 19, he calls man a creature, even though he's in his own image of God. God is in his own image, like as we are. But the thing about this man, when you look it up in Strong's Bible Concordance, it is number 120 and 119. You look at the word 120 in the Hebrew, and it says a hypocrite. God did not make this man to be a capable person to be his own creator and all these things that they make out man to be. The truth of the matter is that he's a, he's a hypocrite. He cannot serve God because he's not got it in him to do it. So Jesus said to John, you must be born again. So what's God's answer? God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, and this is why that you must be born again. And you must make a covenant with God to do that. You can only believe with your mind if you want to. That's not going to help you. You've got to believe with the heart. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. When you agree that you are going to obey God in the scriptures. And you agree that you're going to obey the Holy Ghost. Then you'll be sprinkled with the blood according to Romans 9, 14. The royal blood and you will purge your conscience from dead works, and God will make you a new person where you can serve Him. Is that very clear? Because without that, you're not going to be saved. You'll remain 
If you choose to believe by your mind, a regular man, 120, which you cannot go to heaven with this man. He is a hypocrite. He is critical of God. He wants to use his own mind. He believes he's a creator. He believes he's everything, but he's deceived. Now, truthfully, if you look at the devil and you look why, this came from Genesis chapter 3. Because in Genesis chapter 3, man fell and he took on the nature of Satan. Many people don't realize that satanic influences are embedded in the flesh and it's embedded in everything to do with the world. As an example, 1 John 2, 15 said, all that's in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. So you look at these things and it's born into man. And it says this, when Eve looked and she saw, she didn't have to do that. This is why it's the lust of the eyes. When she, didn't, when she ate, you know, this is the lust of the flesh and the pride of the life of doing what she wanted to do. And therefore, you know, the devil to this day, he picks on certain women with T.D. Jakes, like, woman, be thou loosed. Yeah, they got loose from God and they were able to do their own thing and they worshiped the devil from that day forth. And when they worship God out of their own heart, they choose to obey their self. So you see, in looking at this man very close, you can find out why that man must be born again. So you find that the number six follows him all the way down through the Bible. I gave an example like in Proverbs, what is it, 616? You know, this is a very good scripture because it says six things that God hates. And the seventh is the abomination to him. Well, you can find out that a little bit about the number six. It always refers to something that's of the world. So this man was created. You find out more about this man. If you want to know more about him, you can find out easily enough if you stay with the scriptures. But let us go on with our reference here. And you'll find out by going down through the scriptures that you'll find out the number six always follows man. Now, in this study, I want you to notice the Hebrew number 7969. And this is from Strong's Bible Concordance. And the reason I'm bringing that out is because it refers to a number three. And I'm going to tell people why number three is so important. Number three is a multiplicable number. It multiplies in the scriptures. Jesus prayed three times in the garden. Very, very similar. You know, you can find that three is a, you know, always there's Father, Son, the Holy Ghost. It goes down through the scriptures. So when you look at this very close, this number tells you what it is. 79, 69, one of the things, it's a multiplier. So when you find that in Revelation chapter 13, verses 15 and 16, 17 and 18, you find out that man all of a sudden has taken on a change. At this point, man is infamous. He's going to be in the hall of fame of people who go to hell. <clears throat> if he is not already brainwashed and turned over in his mind, and this is very possible, and if you don't believe that, all you got to do is look what happened to those people before the flood. You can find that out in Romans chapter 1, when man refused to retain God in his mind, and all he wanted to do is retain these other things of the world, that God gave him over to a reprobated mind. He didn't want to re retain the thoughts of God and the will of God and the things of God, so he became a reprobate. And there's many people today are having like the gay pride parade. How many of y'all believe that's kind of like, you know, refusing to retain God in your mind? Okay, let's talk about this just a little bit. The number three goes to the idea of multiplying the power in Revelations chapter 13. That means that this man now has the mark in his forehead. That's in his mind. If you wanted to look this up more so, if I don't have the kind of time it would take to, that I could bring it out to you, or I would take you into 2 Kings and talk about Jezebel and her hands and her skull and her feet that was left after 
<clears throat> she was dead. When they went back to bury her, that's all they found. So you see that she tried, she did kill the prophets of God in 1 Kings 18. You find out that her daughter Athaliah did the same thing later on. These were the seeds of the wicked. Anyway, let's get into the number three sixes. When you look at man here, his mind is reprobate. We've taught for years in this church how that the mind is so important. The mind is the gate to the soul. Here's the idea. If you think on things, if the man think of in his heart, so is he. Can I hear an amen? amen? Many people don't understand that. And they'll sit and they'll watch television and they'll get all of this stuff in their mind and then they, well, I don't really feel like going to church. I really don't believe that anyway. You know, and they're reprobated in their mind. So when men begin to think on things and they begin to think on things that's not of God, it gets in them and it becomes who they are. At this point in Revelations 13, verses 14, 13, you look at people that are deceived by a man who can call fire down from heaven, and you know what? You look at this guy and you wonder what the word means, deceived. And you learn today why people should know the truth. People are not interested in the truth today. They go to church, they don't even want to learn anything. They just want to hear something that's spiritual, they call so they can go home with a conscience that say, oh, I went to church and I did give them some money. And this happens to be their idea of learning. Deception is running rampant over the earth. And if you don't take control of him and cast him out, he will have you and your family, your society, and possibly already has your church. We've got a lot of them today that won't confess it, but come on, let's tell the truth. All these communitarian churches have nothing to do with walking with God. They strictly have to do with mental uh, things that have to do with, oh, you're okay. I'm okay. You're okay. He's okay. Just love everybody. And don't judge nobody now. You know you'll judge out and you'll be judged. So if you leave judging out and don't judge, your sin will all be left out. Yeah, that's what you'll say when you're going into the flames in Revelations chapter 20, but I'll leave that alone for right now. At this time in Revelations 13, man is totally corrupted. The number three has multiplied the evilness of man. That's multiplying the hypocrite. That's multiplying a person. What would you take a, as a sense of evil and how would you multiply a hypocritical mind? What would a mind do you become if it was hypocritical and then you multiplied the evil in it? Somebody say amen. amen. I know you're getting this. There's people today that don't understand how evil man can be. When they have this, this idea of I have to look at my thoughts and search them a little bit. There's an idea of, you know, they don't even love their family. You remember that word? <laughs> I have to think about it. It's in Revelation, or excuse me, Second, First Corinthians chapter 6. You find it in those words if you keep looking them up. But you know, they're so hardened in their heart. This is where it all goes. When you take the hypocritical man that I read to you about and you look and see who he is and then you find out why he cannot be saved. Jesus said in John 8, you're of your father the devil. And it was all had to do because they took on his nature from Genesis chapter 3. I don't care how you're beautiful your baby may look. I'm telling you, he has to be born again too, amen? I don't care if you're out here running around doing drugs and oh yes, yes, I'll get him. God will get him. You should have raised him up in the ways of the Lord and he wouldn't be departed from him. Amen? I mean, that's what the Bible says. So anyway, we find out in Revelations 3 that man has now maneuvered quickly. He has moved from being a hypocrite to a triple hypocrite. All in one, like the things you buy today in electronics. He's all in one. Hey, hey, hey. But you know, it's kind of different than that. So let's go just a little bit farther. And I want to talk to you now about why is this a part of the mark of the beast that we see today. And this is only one thing. Let me say this before I get caught up in my message too far. The ideal of this, traditions of the elders in Matthew 15. Many people have no idea what the depth of that is. Now let me bring you to, to 
realize that this is not one sin. How many of y'all know the word traditions is plural? Meaning more than one thing. Now most of the people said, oh, the mark in the forehead, I'll never take the chip. Well, you're stupid. You know, that's what they want you to think. Yeah, that'll be part of it. But really, it goes much deeper than that. The mark in the forehead is, you know, yeah, you get a chip in your right hand because whatever you got your mind to, that's what you'll wind up doing. I mean, the devil keeps you with your mind on sex organs and, you know, all of these things. Like in Israel, you walk down, uh, you know, Rothschild Boulevard in Tel Aviv and they got a a 10-foot sexual organ up in the middle of the street. How many of y'all could live there without having your mind, without having your mind tormented with all those things? You look at 10,000 pornography quotations that are down that boulevard on sides of the street everywhere. They want to turn that, and they've already did it, turn that country into a total homosexual country. And you look at Revelation 11 verse 8, the city where Jesus was crucified is actually Jerusalem. 200,000 plus parade this year. Very sad. But you're not supposed to know that, so you can kind of erase that if you want to and stay ignorant. You know, they'll not, they'll not tell you anything about it because they want you to stay that way. But anyway, let's talk about the tradition of the elders. What have they did from the very beginning and what they're still doing in Revelations 18 is very apparent. It's not very hard to see what this is. You can look in the scriptures and you can find out many places. So I'm going to give you today the origin of like where it came from today and what we're dealing with. And I'm going to jump a little bit down to the second paragraph in the second column. Look what it says. Sexual sins of perversion, which were in the days of Noah and continued after the flood until this very day. This was the subject. I cut it off there, maybe abruptly, maybe a little bit too quick. But let's take a look at Genesis chapter 6. And I'll tell you why we're talking about this. Genesis chapter 6, verse 1, is very important. If you want to know what happened before the flood, you can learn how to look at this, learn how to study this, and you can find out from Genesis 6, verse 1, the word began, B-E-G-A-N. You can look it up in the Hebrew, it's 2490. And the other number that goes along with it, I brought this out in our study here, the other number that goes along with it, is 2342. That's at the bottom of the second column if you're looking on your paper and you're trying to find it. 2342. If you look that word up, it says perversion. This is what Paul had preached from in Romans chapter 1 when he said they love the creature more than the creator. When he says that men became vain in their imagination. Genesis chapter 6, look at verse 5 here. God saw the imagination of man was continually evil. It happened before the flood. But you know what? The devil is the God of this world. This was past Genesis 3, and he now controls things. So through the imagination and the people today with listening to Joyce Myers, who people adore so much, said, oh, you just need to imagine things and be like these children. They don't worry about anything. You need to really imagine things and don't be so uptight about stuff. You know, these kind of people need to be put down, put in jail, and they will be before long because they're a bunch of liars. And I'll show you how to put a profile together and know who they are in a minute maybe if I have time. So anyway, if you look at this word, began. When men began to multiply on the face of the earth, daughters were born unto them. 
And uh, you can look at this and God saw that the fake, and I'm going to use the word fake teaching today about giants coming back, is so fake it ain't even worthy to talk about. And you know what? These guys are reprobated that want to teach this and it's nothing but Jewish lies. I call it Jewish lies. The word in the Bible for it is sophistry that is mentioned so many times in the Bible under word like the wise men and philosophy, craftiness, and how that people are crafty in their own mind, twisting scriptures around to make you believe certain stuff. So anyway, to make a long story short, you can find out in Genesis chapter 6 what had really happened. This is what the flood was all about. It was about perversion. It was about living in their imagination. And that's the two things today that Satan is using to throw down people and to corrupt mankind. The people that don't have the ideal of protecting their mind, they're Bible ignorant. They've let their children be raised up by television and wicked things in the media. And then they want to cry when their sons are out becoming a LGBT. <clears throat> and for you that don't know what that means, you need to learn, honey. LGBT is a lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender, like they're trying to do to your children today. Anyway, it tells you who's running our country. To make a long story short, imagination and sexual perversion and religiosity is the very thing that you find in Revelation chapter 6, verse 1. 24, 9, it tells you how religious they were and how they were praying all the time. But there's something kind of odd here because when you look at it, they really did not have a walk with God and they didn't please God. And God was so tired of their mess that he destroyed them. Does that tell you anything? There's a little bit more than just being religious. Okay, let's talk about the bloodline curse. That's in Revelation chapter 6, jump, or Genesis chapter 6. I want you to jump down to Genesis chapter 9. We're going to convince people today, if they're Bible believers, we're going to convince them of the origin of homosexuality and how real it is. I cannot believe, it's hard, I'll say it this way, to believe that people are calling themselves Christians and have no better knowledge of the Bible rather than to say, oh, I don't believe God's going to really be hard on homosexuals. Boo, hoo, hoo. It's up to you to tell people the Bible. You don't be a Christian and then you can't even tell the people what the Bible says about it. What kind of church do you go to? You need to tell people the truth about the Bible. Can I hear an amen? amen? You ain't got it in you to tell the truth about the Bible. I can't see that you're that good of a Christian. I think you need to take a, a little bit of an assay of your own mind. and Maybe you've corrupted yourself by listening to certain people you like who are really not really preaching the Bible. And that's very common. Okay, Revelations chapter 9. I want you to look, or excuse me, I keep saying Revelations. Genesis chapter 9, I want you to look at me at verse 22. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father. The bad part about this is that Noah shouldn't have never got drunk, but in verse 20 and 21, he planted a vineyard, and he drank it, and he began to get drunk. And then in verse 22, Canaan saw the nakedness of his father and told his brethren... Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren outside. And Sham and Japheth took a garment and laid it up on both of their shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward and they saw not their father's nakedness. But when Noah awoke, verse 24 from his wine, he knew what his younger son had done unto him. Why do you believe the word is even important? Why would he tell a story like that in the Bible about he knew what they did to him? Well, was he talking about covering them up? No. He's talking about the word K-N-E-W. This is the word that is normally called sex from one man to another one. This is sodomy. If you look up these words in the Hebrew, 
You will find the words like pudenda. You'll find the words like they looked upon his naked parts of his body. And it requires a closer examination. So you find out that actually this man did something with his father. Well, what did that do? And why would that make Noah so angry that he would turn around and look in verse 25? And he said, after he knew what they had done, or what he had done, what Ham had done, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants, shall he be unto his brethren. Now the Lord brought this out very well because in verse 22, it says, Ham, the father of Canaan, is the one who did it. Why would he say the father of Canaan? Because he wants you to see the idea that Ham is the one here that was guilty of the sin, but he wants you to understand the idea of a bloodline covenant, a bloodline curse. And you can see these two that are opposite in the Bible. So let's talk now about the bloodline curse. How many of y'all believe in a bloodline curse? Okay, hold on. If you look at this, he says in verse 26, And blessed be the Lord God of Shem and Canaan shall be his servant. If you notice something, God shall enlarge Japheth and shall dwell in the tents with Shem and Canaan shall be their servants. Okay. If you go down and keep searching this out, nothing seems to be really bad happening to Ham who was guilty of the sodomy. Of course, he died. I'm sure he went to hell. But look what happened in verse number 15. The curse. He cursed Canaan, who begot Sidon, his firstborn, and Heth, H-E-T-H. If you look up the word Heth, it means a Canaanite. So he was the beginning of the Canaanites. And if you look in verse 16, 17, 18, then you can go to 19 and see what happened after that. The sexual acts of Ham upon his father and the curses that came down to Canaan is seen in verse 19. Now for those of you that want to condemn me for telling you about the sexual sin and Ham's sodomy against his father, then you better look at the scriptures and watch what the scriptures say, and then you can save your cursing for me for later on. And the border of the Canaanites was from Sidon that cometh to Gerar to Gaza, and thou goest to Sodomy, Sodom and Gomorrah, and the Mon and Zimoams, even to La, 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 Lesha. These are the sons of Ham after their families, after their tongues, in the countries and in their nations. So you look at Sodom and Gomorrah and you follow this, it's not very hard to find out that this sexual sin went with the bloodline. So if you believe this is a curse, then you go along with the Bible. Can I hear an amen? amen? You have to look at the curse that comes down through the bloodline because this curse actually came from the other side of the flood because they were into very particular sins there. So you find out that Sodom and Gomorrah was very evil and that God destroyed them in Genesis chapter 19. But before he destroyed them, I'll give you an idea of why that he had destroyed them. It's kind of like, you know, if you look this up in Genesis chapter 19, it's very uh, apparent that you find in verse number 4, when the angels came to Sodom, it says in verse 4, Before they laid down, they were persuaded to come into Lot's house and stay with him. He, you know, persuaded them. But before they laid down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, here it comes nighttime, compassed the house round both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where art thou? Where are the men which came unto thee this night? 
Bring them out here that we may know them. We're going to sodomize them. And Lot went out at the door, and he shut the door after him, and he said, Brethren, I pray, do not so wickedly. Behold, now I have two daughters, have not known men. Let me, I pray, you bring them out unto you, and do you to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing, for therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. And they said to Lot, Stand back. And they said it again. This one fellow came into sojourn, Lot they're talking about, and he will now be our judge. Now will we do worse with thee than with them. And they pressed sore upon Lot. And they came near to break the door, but the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house, the angels, and shut the door, and they smote the men that were at the door with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to even find the door. So the angels came in and stopped the whole situation. But I think if you got anything to know about the scriptures, that you understand the curse of sodomy and the curse of those that participate in it come all the way from before the flood and it is a curse that has come down to the bloodlines now in our days. And you find out here that they become very bold. This is what you call the gay pride parade today. They become so bold they're not ashamed of it anymore. You can look at Israel, how they are on the floats that go down the street in their gay parade, how the men parade in a G-string. Excuse me? I could go into this more, but I'll leave that alone. I told you about the emblems, emblems that they have in the streets over there now, which the tourists are not supposed to see. And the people that take the tour groups there have certain places they take them, and you're not allowed to run around yourself and go anywhere you want to. Because they have gay beaches, they have... Much of this kind of stuff there today is what it's all about. And you know Netanyahu brags about it. So they're only keeping this secret to you through the American uh, ignorant people that watch Fox and CNN News and believe what they hear there is real. Anyway, to make a long story short, that's terrible. Now let's follow this down and see where it goes because the tradition of the elders, as I brought to you, consists of many things. Go to me with 1 Kings. 1 Kings 17. Well, I know I done made some people unhappy. But I'm sorry a little bit. Not too much. If you notice something in 1 Kings, which I think is very informative... And this is not the beginning. If you look at where this sin actually went to, it goes to 1 Kings chapter 9 and 10 and 11. You can find that Solomon was actually catering to his wives when he built a house for child sacrifice, when he worships the God of sodomy when he actually worships the God of positive preaching, no hell, no damnation, no danger. He worshiped the God of Seamoth, which is royalty, which tells those homosexuals that they're royal. This is where they get the idea that a homosexual Jew today is the greatest person that there is in the world. They get that out of the Talmud. And you know, you can find that, and it's not hard. I've got a copy of it if you want to see it. But this is kind of where this all comes from. Solomon was into it. I think he's the wickedest, one of the most wicked men in the world. And his profile is exactly like Satan's profile in Ezekiel 28. It was money. It was about wisdom. And it was about knowledge. And it was about all the things that consist of taking the mark of the beast. But now, look what happened. In 1 Kings chapter 16, the Bible said that Ahab did evil. Look in verse 30. And Ahab the son of Amri did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. What did he do that was evil above all that was before him? 
it came to pass it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam. Now Jeroboam brought up the golden calves and he not only brought up the golden calves but he did that to stop people from worshiping God according to Moses' law. He wanted to come, you know, to have power over them. Nevertheless, look what it says. A light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that he took Jezebel, the daughter of Ithbel, king of the Zidonians. If you look at the word S-I-D-O-N in Genesis 10, look up the word Zidonian here, you'll find they have the same root word meaning, and it's the same people. So there's two groups that you find from here. One is Tyre and one is Sidon. But let's see why that God was so uh, upset about King Ahab marrying Jezebel, the daughter of Ithbel, king of the Zidonians, and they went and served Baal and worshipped him. So you look at Baal worship, it includes all of those things. Inquiring of every false god, believing every strange mystery from the devil, and all the preaching that you're seeing today on TBN, the positive preaching, where you're not allowed to talk about this, and you're not allowed to talk about destructive things like GMO foods, fluoride, those kind of things. They don't want to talk about that. You're not supposed to talk about that. Monsanto wasn't like that. And so anyway, we'll leave that alone. But if you notice something, he makes a startling statement here. Verse 32, he reared up the altars for Baal, the house of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. In 2 Kings 22, you find out there's competition. They built the houses of the devil the houses of false worship, the houses of sodomy, and they had emblems on them where they actually advertised sexual preference to be men to men and women to women. You look at this word 33, and he made a grove, and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord. And what the groves mean, if you look up the word groves, no, it's not talking about trees, and it's not talking about bushes, it's talking about sins. That's what the word groves means. It's sexual sodomy and the worshiping of demon spirits. So this came, as you see, it bled down from Genesis chapter 10. <clears throat> Sidon. Here you find the Sidonians. How many of y'all believe that's realistically accurate in the Bible? All right. I want you to look with me to 1 Kings 18. First Kings 18, it talks about Jezebel and what she did. It says that it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord that Obadiah took a hundred prophets and hid them by fifties in a cave and fed them with bread and water. Look at verse 13, First Kings 18 verse 13. Was it not told my Lord, is what Obadiah said to Elijah, what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord, how that I hid a hundred of them in uh, the, the Lord's men by fifties in a cave, and I fed them with bread and water. Now go back one chapter, and let's go to chapter 17. I want to give you a little bit of an idea of what times you're living in. You see, these people hate Christianity. They want to get rid of your Bibles. Jezebel had them killed because they hate our Bible. They hate what it represents because it represents their doom. It tells you about their sins. It tells you to stay away from them, that there's a time coming when God is going to come down and shake everything in this world that can be shaken. And it's all seen in about four different places in the Bible. In other words, Isaiah chapter 3, Isaiah 2, 3, and 4, you find out that God said he's going to destroy their present day Israel. You can look in other scriptures like Ezekiel chapter 7, when they were so discouraged about their God, whom they worship with money, that they threw their money in the streets. You can go on and you can look at God's promise in uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 27 and 28. 
Paul preached about it when he said everything will be shaken that it might be removed. We're looking at times now when people are, pre- are paid well to actually preach the opposite of the Bible. But we know today they worship money. They worship themselves. They worship the sex god. You can see that in Daniel 11 verse 37, verse 38. They worship the strange god of strange things. You can find it all in Ezekiel chapter 28. It's very apparent when you look at Satan's nature and you see how he worships all of these things like money. Then you look at the people that's preaching the gospels today that wants to point the Christians toward the same thing, toward money. What happened in this 1 Kings 17? 1 Kings 17, look at verse 1. Elijah the Tishbite was of the inhabitants of Gilead, and he said unto Ahab, the Lord God of Israel, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. This is what the Bible calls the Old Testament tribulation period. It consists of 42 months, and it foreshadows the book of Revelations beginning with chapter 6. And it tells you what's going to happen in those 42 months. You can look at this and confirm it with James. In the book of James, he talks about three and a half years. When you go to Luke chapter 4, you'll find out that Jesus talked about the tribulation. I think in the days of the woman at Zidon. I think you can find that in Luke 4, 25, somewhere around there. You know, this is not a secret how there was an Old Testament tribulation. What caused it? It's apparent. If you don't believe this, then you need to read your Bible again. 1 Kings 16, verse 31, 32, 33. And then you compare that with Revelations, or excuse me, uh, 1 Kings 17, verse 1. This did not rain. If you know what this means... In Revelation, or excuse me, 1 Kings 18, verse 1, do you see this? And it came to pass after many days, the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year. That means three years and six months. That's 42 months. You get the ideal year. See, if God judged them, now let's talk about this. If God judged them for sodomy, for worshiping devils, and for doing the things they're doing, and you see where I showed you the origin of this was in Genesis chapter 10, Genesis chapter 11. You can find it all there, Genesis chapter 9. And you see that God judged them, but the ideal of the people today, they want to push this on Christians. They want to push this into Christian mind, and they're going to demand our Bible to be taken before long and call it freedom of speech, dead in not allowed anymore. You've got to talk about their God. Today it's all right for you to talk about every other religion, but Christianity, you're not allowed to do that. They're taking down the manger scenes. They've taken down everything in this country that relates to Jesus Christ. And they're going to turn this over to a third world dominated country by Israel. She already rides the beast. She already takes all the money from America. She already took the jobs out of America and placed them where they can get more profit making things in other countries because they're the one who controls this. And you find those great merchants all the way in Revelations 18. You find out in Revelation 17 and 18, they control the commercial part of the world because they own all the money. But you find out the tribulation period here is very real. It's not hard to find out who this is. And you find out that the tri- traditions, traditions of the elders are consisting of many things. But a couple of the main things is that brings all this out and it pulls on them because the lust of the flesh, the sodomy, the worshiping of evil spirits that are in that. And then you look at the ideal of being brainwashed. That's what the three sixes are about in Revelations 13. That's why it's 666, multiplying the inability of man, multiplying his stupidity at that point, 
multiplying the man that cannot make any decisions anymore because he never learned to protect his mind. And even today, you've got people out there that are shooting drugs that are ready to die because they have been so overcome with drug dealing. They can find every criminal in this country, but oh, they never can find the drug dealers. I'm talking about the big men. Drug kingpins that you're not supposed to talk about. And no, it's not the Mexican mafia. I don't believe that for a minute, but you know you've got a lot of brainwashed people that do. Of course, they believe that Trump's a Sunday school teacher. He, he, he. I don't kind of believe he is. I mean, you're the king of the gambling casinos in the whole world, you know, that deals with prostitution, that deals with, you know, every kind of deception in the world. There's not one sin that's not found in gambling casinos. You're talking about alcohol, everything that promotes the devil, but yet they get up and claim to be Christians. Oh, yes, yes, I believe that. And then you've got the whores like Paula White that'll get up and pray for them. And those people that are with them, Copeland. But these are the billionaires. These are the hundreds of millions of dollars. And these are the people that line up with Satan in Ezekiel chapter 28. If you want to see the people of God, you look at 2 Peter 1. It says we have precious faith. That's what's precious in our sight. The Bible is our precious faith. Word of God, because faith comes about hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Can I hear an amen? You cannot hear uh, any other stuff beside the Bible and have faith, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You can look at Hebrews chapter 11, and you can find out that many great things was did by the heroes of faith who use faith. And I believe one day it'll all come out when God's people will be famous at the judgment seat of Christ. Yeah, it's not our time now. We're despised. Jesus was despised. You can't be greater than Jesus. Can I hear an amen? If the apostles were despised and every poor person is despised and all of the interest on the money by these big people and you don't know who they are, I'm sorry. They don't like the little people and everything they do today is to manipulate the little people and use them up to trick them out of their money daily on the television. Oh, you need to give money to these people that are so hungry. Oh, they're hungry now and they need your money. Why don't anybody ever ask for proof where those people are? They own the televisions. Hollywood owns TBN. Hollywood owns Daystar, Church Channel, Fox, CNN. They own the whole deal. But yet you've got people that don't believe that. And they control all the banks in the world too. And I think people need to know why they hate Iran so much because they don't control their banks. Why do they hate Syria and Assad? He don't bother Christians or anything, but they don't control his banks. You know, this is the whole thing about it. If you don't go along with them, it's like the mark of the beast in Revelations 13. If you don't worship him and his mark, you'll be killed. And they have this going and they're never going to stop. If you believe in Jesus, say amen. amen. Come on, let's all stand. I want to encourage everyone watching by the way of television to take good, I don't know, assay of what I've said. Look at these scriptures, follow it out. I don't hate people, but I'm going to stand with our Bible for what it really teaches until Jesus comes. And I pray that people will stand with us and begin to believe God. And I believe they'll stop attending churches that don't know what they're preaching about. I believe we need to bring it out. And I believe we need to stay in the scriptures. And we need to tell people how to keep their self and to keep their family. Amen? Amen. Lift your hands up and let's pray. Father, we thank you right now. We ask you, Lord, to open up every eye of every person. And Father, we ask you to help people to make a commitment with you to obey the Bible, to obey the Holy Spirit, and to stay with the scriptures. And Father, we pray that their names would be in the book of life. And Father, they would get their minds off of these rich people and understand they're of the devil and they serve Satan. And Father, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. I praise you for it. And I thank you, God, to keep us from all of those people. In the name of Jesus, everybody said, Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap.